Welcome to Better Than Ever Live, wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening. Hope you're making today your masterpiece. On today's show, we're going to make a lot of people angry. I'm going to talk about surgery for a meniscus tear, one of the most common operations performed in the United States. I'm going to talk about why arthroscopic surgery to treat that tear, a right? cleanup or debridement of the meniscus in the knee, might actually be harmful for some, maybe many adults. I'm Dr. David Geyer, triple board certified orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine specialist, anti-aging and regenerative medicine expert, and media medical expert. I hope you feel and perform your best regardless of age, injury, or medical history. As always, please understand I'm not giving you medical advice on today's show. In any of my videos, on the website, anywhere, this is meant for general information and educational purposes only. If you have comments or questions about meniscus tears and arthroscopic cleanup surgeries, debridement, that kind of thing, leave those in the chat. If you're on YouTube, chat, not comments. I can only see the chat. LinkedIn, Facebook, you guys comment however you normally do there. Most of my viewers are from link or from uh, YouTube, so that's why I'm, I mention the chat. Make sure you check there. Also, I'd love for you to give your first name and where you're located along with your comment or question. I'd just like to know where people are. I have a very wide audience across the world, I've figured out. So uh, I think just last week on my uh, Ask Dr. Guy live show, I had somebody from Denmark, Mark. I had somebody from India, I had somebody I, I have a lot of people from all over. I'm always uh, curious where people are from. So this is a topic, like I said, that is going to make people, not a lot of people, some people may agree with it, but a lot of people upset because again, it is, it, it was recently the most common operation in the entire United States, not just orthopedic surgery, but all of medicine, even though a lot of European countries don't allow their surgeons to do it past a certain age. And that is an arthroscopic surgery where you go in and clean up or debride a knee with what's called a degenerative meniscus tear. These are seen in middle-aged adults, you know, maybe 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, even older than that, that is almost always accompanied by some degree of osteoarthritis of the knee caused usually by a chronic degenerative process, something that's gone on for a long period of time. Occasionally, they may remember some minor event. They went to squat down to pick something up off the floor. Maybe it started then, not really sure. A lot of times they start having knee pain and they don't remember a specific injury. Now, more and more studies over the last decade or so, maybe 15 years, have shown that arthroscopic surgery with a partial meniscectomy for degenerative meniscus tears may not be a great idea and that non-operative treatment really should be the first line treatment, maybe the only treatment. Now, even with more and more studies questioning how well this surgery works, studies I'm gonna talk about here in a second, it's still, like I said, a very, very common procedure. Now, the arguments orthopedic surgeons use, and I can say this because I did thousands, easily a thousand of those surgeries in the 16 years that I practice as a traditional orthopedic surgeon doing arthroscopic surgeries all the time. Now I don't operate anymore. I focus on anti-aging, orthopedics, regenerative medicine, that kind of thing. And so, I, but I feel comfortable saying that there are reasons that the surgeons give for doing it, reasons I used to give. And that is basically, well, it's the meniscus tear causing the symptoms, not the arthritis. So if you go in and scope the knee, trim out the meniscus tear, that's what's going to make people better. They'll say, oh, you've got locking, you've got uh, catching or clicking or specifically located tenderness along either the medial joint line or the lateral joint line. So that's the meniscus and the surgery will make that better. Uh, if it's more diffuse, chronic pain all the time, then it's more arthritis, maybe it wouldn't help. The problem is surgery is not risk-free. We know that's true with all kinds of things, things like blood clots, things like infections, problems with anesthesia, but it's not as much that. I mean, that's obviously true with any surgery. It's the, the thought and what we're going to talk about, some of these studies showing that it actually may accelerate the arthritis and make the cartilage damage worse. So in today's show, I want to talk about three studies, and there are more than this, but three fairly recent studies looking at this particular question. The first 
uh, was a surgery done, I think it was in the Netherlands uh, a few years ago, looking at degenerative meniscus tears and arthroscopic surgery and whether or not it increased the risk of a knee replacement. It was in the journal Osteoarthritis Cartilage, uh, again, and it was Dutch researchers that did this. Again, their rationale, what they were going to look at was partial meniscectomy, trimming out the inner part of the meniscus tear arthroscopically, and whether that helped middle-aged or older adults, uh, and should you do it, should you not. So they have a, a federal health agency or, or institute, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, that specifically said, hey, this surgery is not recommended as part of the treatment for osteoarthritis, um, but with exceptions, with a clear history of locking of the knee. So what they wanted to see is, all right, what happens to people that have an arthroscopic knee surgery compared to very similar people that have arthritis and a degenerative meniscus tear that aren't treated surgically. They got their patients from what's called the Osteoarthritis Initiative. They were people between the ages of 45 and 79. All races, they all had or were higher risk of developing symptomatic knee osteoarthritis. Now, how they defined that was frequent knee pain over the past 12 months, pain, aching, stiffness around the knee for most days over the course of the month and really over the past 12 months and x-ray evidence of arthritis. So again, that's what we're looking at. People with degenerative meniscus tears and osteoarthritis. And uh, what they did is they contacted all these people and found out which ones had arthroscopic knee surgery and meniscectomy, where again, where they uh, cut away part of the torn meniscus um, and then followed them to find out or asked how many of them went on to develop or to get a knee replacement. There were over 4,600 patients in this study. They were followed for over eight and a half years. Over that period of time, 335 of them had arthroscopic meniscectomy. And uh, what, what that get, so it was either in one knee or the other knee or in both. I was surprised about 10% of the patients actually had it in both. But here's what they found out in terms of future knee replacement, about 10%, just under 10% ended up undergoing knee replacement. It was much higher, a much higher percentage of patients that had undergone the arthroscopic meniscectomy, the clean up the debridement uh, procedure. 18, almost 19% of them ended up having a knee replacement compared to only 11% that had that degenerative meniscus tear and arthritis treated non-surgically. So basically what they concluded, arthroscopic knee surgery with meniscectomy led to an increased risk of needing a future knee replacement surgery. And it, it substantiates that concern that if you do surgery for a degenerative meniscus tear, you're probably not giving them much short-term benefit, but you're increasing the progression of the osteoarthritis and increasing the chances that they're going to need a knee replacement. So I think that alone it says, hey, we need to think about this a little bit and maybe hold off on doing it. Uh, in fact, they say three-fold increase in the risk for knee replacement surgery. Now, there can be a lot of reasons is that. That can be increased progression of the osteoarthritis. Uh, there can be you know, any number of reasons. Uh, you know, they took out some of the meniscus, now there's less shock absorber and it doesn't protect the cartilage in a knee that's already got osteoarthritis changes, but in their mind, it just didn't seem the right thing to do. Um, those of you, Mike and uh, um, Basat, uh, just know, and I, I do appreciate your questions. I uh, do a, a show on Fridays, Ask Dr. Geyer Live, 12 p.m. Eastern Time. I am happy to answer those questions. Here we're just talking about this one particular topic. If you have thoughts about what we're talking about, definitely leave those. Otherwise, join me tomorrow at noon. But back to what we were saying, arthroscopic meniscectomy uh, doesn't seem in this study to be worth the, in terms of benefits, the risk of progressing the arthritis and needing uh, a knee replacement sooner. All right, second study was a study that looked at databases, insurance database, uh, databases, and the cost 
of patients undergoing partial meniscectomy, arthroscopic surgery for a meniscus tear. The rates that subsequently underwent arthroplasty um, compared to people that didn't have surgery for their meniscus tear. It was in the journal Knee Surgery, Sports Traumatology, and Arthroscopy. It was done at the University of Kansas uh, just a few years ago. And again, same type of thing. But the difference here is they wanted to figure out what the cost of treatment for the arthroscopic partial meniscectomy was, not just for the surgery, but then what it led to uh, compared to people that underwent non-surgical treatment. Again, it was based on a hospital or an insurance database, uh, this basically this data, data mining software, software. So it was a database of almost 24 million orthopedic patients that had been diagnosed for a meniscus tear. And then they split those up by non-operative treatment and surgical treatment, the arthroscopic partial meniscectomy, and then followed them for cost and what percent progressed to knee arthroplasty. So they had 176,000 patients in the non-operative group, over 114,000 in the surgery group. Obviously, you might not be surprised the, the group that underwent surgery, the costs were higher. You have the cost of surgery versus non-operative treatment. But the ones that had the arthroscopic partial meniscectomy, much higher rates of undergoing a knee arthroplasty, a knee replacement down the road. Females especially were even higher than males in terms of progressing from, hey, I got my knee cleaned out through the scope and then now I need a knee replacement. So a little bit of different study design. This is looking at an insurance database, which is a little bit different. You can have coding errors and, and lots of different things, but again, shows it's more expensive. It does, does not stop the progression to needing knee replacement and actually seems to accelerate that and they undergo it quicker. So that obviously would be uh, something that's less ideal. Um, all right, and then um, the last one I wanna talk about again, and, and that study's a little difficult. Insurance studies, insurance databases are a little limited, but it's also huge, huge database of patients. So you get a real, uh, a nice, uh, patient effect size at least. All right, and then the last one I want to talk about is a surgery basically looking at not just degenerative meniscus tears, but traumatic meniscus tears. So these are the ones typically that you remember the specific event. You land from a jump and twist or you or, you know change directions or something like that and you have a traumatic meniscus tear. The degenerative, remember, we talked about they don't really have a specific event. This was a, a study published in the BMJ, a study out of Denmark actually, um, and they took patients between the ages of 18 and 55, which makes sense. Traumatic meniscus tears typically are things suffered by people 30 and under, maybe 35 and under, whereas the degenerative typically is a little bit older. And what they wanted to see is, is there a difference in outcomes basically uh, for, for arthroscopic partial meniscectomy between a degenerative meniscus tear, which we've already talked about may not do so well, and ones that were traumatic meniscus tears, which are typically not sort of, they look like they're chewed up, but there's like usually one tear line, like a longitudinal tear or a parrot beak tear or something like that. Uh, these people on average were 38. So this is a much younger group than in the two studies we talked about earlier. But what they found, this may really kind of shock the people that said, oh, no, no, we need to do surgery because it's a meniscus tear. Even the patients with traumatic meniscus tears didn't fare all that much better than people with degenerative tears. The degenerative tears didn't have the much benefit, but the traumatics didn't have all that much benefit either. They didn't do significantly better after that surgery either. So what does that mean? I, I know I, I've kind of gone through this and said, hey, there's questions. Here's what I would take home from this. This surgery is badly overdone. It, it, I don't know any other way to say this. That is a surgery that not nearly enough people that have meniscus tears, way too many people that have meniscus tears undergo surgery and it probably isn't going to help them. If you've got arthritis changes in the knee already, and then you and MRIs are good at showing a degenerative meniscus tear and that it's degenerative as opposed to maybe a solitary uh, traumatic meniscus tear. 
pro those probably don't need surgery. I mean, I know some European countries base it on age, like people 55 and older can't have that surgery. People I've heard younger than that. That's probably true because by that age, you know, whether it's 40 or 50 or 55 or 60, probably already have coexisting arthritis. But just going in and trimming out the meniscus tear, yeah, you might feel better for a few months, but now you have less shock absorber in there and it does nothing to stop the disease progression. But as we've seen, it seems to accelerate it. The traumatic part surprised me. I feel like repairable meniscus tears, uh, that like a longitudinal tear that you can put stitches in, I feel like you should do that if you can do that uh, because you save that meniscus. I haven't really seen studies on traumatic repairable meniscus tears in people with arthritis because you don't typically see that. The, the repairable meniscus tears are teenagers and people in their 20s almost exclusively. Uh, I mean, maybe I've had 10 in my career that were 40 and older that were truly repairable, but that's a whole different study, the story. This is a surgery that is overdone. Again, it's one of the most common operations in the United States, and I don't think we're doing people a lot of favors other than boosting uh, the incomes of the joint replacement surgeons six and nine months later because we've sped up their arthritis. And, and I will say I did them for a long time, uh, but now seeing it from the other side, and, and I had a, a patient today, for instance, that I had met at a conference where I was speaking the day before. She was on her fourth knee surgery, and it started with the meniscectomy and then went to uh, a couple partial uh, knee replacements and now needs a total knee replacement. And um, that all happened in less than a two-year period. And uh, I do wonder if they had left the meniscus surgery alone. She probably already had arthritis and maybe she ends up at a knee replacement at some point, but I bet it wouldn't be now. I bet it would be way down the road. Um, so that's how I feel about it. I am happy to entertain ideas if people have difference of, of opinions, but that is kind of my thought. Uh, Kareem, I said this uh, earlier to the uh, other folks uh, that were here. Um, the Join me tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, Ask Dr. Guy or Live is where I, all I do is answer orthopedic questions people have from all over the world. It's the only place I do it. I don't do it in the response to comments left on my videos. I don't do it on my website. I don't do it in email because I just don't have the time. But join me tomorrow or pretty much any Friday. I am happy to do that. Uh, Mike says, yeah, it's unfortunate for everybody that gets the meniscectomy. Uh, I would agree. I don't, I don't really know a, another way uh, to put it, uh, some I'm just not gonna say some people do feel better for a few months, and some of the studies, the older studies, show hey they may have three months of benefit or something like that. But surgery is not risk free, and surgery is not cheap. Uh, so you always want to avoid it if it's if it's not something that's terribly necessary. Uh, as far as alternatives, that, that is a real good question. That gets to some of the stuff that I've talked about on prior Better Than Ever Lives and occasionally on, on um, Ask Dr. Geyer Live shows. Uh, things like physical therapy can be helpful, injections. I know PRP is something that uh, has been shown to help some people with osteoarthritis. Uh, exosomes are sort of the latest, greatest thing past stem cells. I think that's potentially really exciting. I know that people have talked about injecting BPC-157 into the knee and see if that helps with pain and getting cartilage to heal. Uh, those are sort of on the regenerative side, and, and I know that's considered experimental. I'm not telling anybody that they should do that, but it certainly looks promising. Uh, those are sort of the things. I'm, as I talked about on a show a few weeks ago, not a big fan of cortisone shots, uh, and I'm happy to get into that at some point. Anyway, I am done. I'm off my soapbox. I do appreciate you listening. If you would like to see me as a patient, I am happy to do that. I see patients in Charleston, South Carolina. In the des uh, description below, there's a link to my website, drdavidgeyer.com. Feel free to uh, check that out, and you uh, can go to the contact page, fill that out, click schedule an appointment, tell me a little bit about the problem, and my assistant and I, we can help set that up. One of the few triple board certified orthopedic surgeons, one of the very few uh, certified by the American Board of Anti-Aging and Regenerative Medicine. I am happy to talk to you about all your options, not just surgery, cortisone, physical therapy, things like that. If you like this show, make sure you subscribe to the podcast, Better Than Ever Live, wherever you get your podcasts. Join us Fridays for Ask Dr. Geyer Live. Uh, 
if you ever have injuries. If you like videos like this, subscribe, click the bell to be notified when I start live streams. I am always happy to interact with you. So thank you so much for joining. Mike, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And, and all of you that Kareem and who else? Uh, Donald, uh, Basant. I saw somebody else too. Um, sometimes I miss a few of those. But yes, j definitely join me tomorrow. Very excited that you're here. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you very soon. Have a great night.